Hello and welcome to Pinball Help. Mike here. Today we're going to talk about flippers. And more flippers. And even more flippers. So here I have a row of a variety of different pinball machines across different eras. We've got a brand new Foo Fighters over here. This is an XO, an electromechanical game from the 70s. Here's Theater of Magic. This is a 1990s game. And I'm going to talk about the flippers and the flipper mechs and how they work. And I'm going to show you the differences and the similarities between all of these different architectures. They're all basically the same. Basically, flippers have not changed fundamentally in design for 50, 60 years. They're all basically composed of the same basic components. You have a coil here, which is an electromagnet. You have a plunger right here. And when, the, when power is applied to the coil, it, it magnetizes and it attracts this solid metal plunger and it goes in. And that is attached to a bat on the upper part of the play field. So when this thing goes in, the, the flipper on the top part flips up. And so it converts uh, electrical energy into mechanical energy. And that is how the flippers basically work. There's a little bit more complicated parts than that having to do with holding the flippers up. But basically it's an electromagnet and a piece of metal that's on a swing arm. And that's how the thing works. So what happens when there's all kinds of different common problems that you'll have with flippers, and I'm going to talk about each one of them and how to address them. So one common thing with all flippers, and this is the flipper in the theater of magic. You see the, pl the, the, the electromagnet, the coil, the plunger right here, and the swing arm. If we look up top, you can see when I move the flipper, it moves the uh, flipper there. So I'm moving it with my hand. Now, you'll notice there's also three lugs on this coil. This is because this has two different coils. It has a high power and a low power portion. The high power one is to initially fire the coil. The low power is to keep it up. So most flipper problems that you're going to encounter are either going to be electrical or mechanical. And we'll go over each of the different types of problems. So the first thing is, if you have a flipper that is sticking, if it's sticking up when you turn the game on, what you want to do initially is just turn the power off. If when the power goes off, the flipper goes down, you know it's an electrical problem. If you turn the power off and the flipper stays up, you know it's a mechanical problem. And so we'll address both of those different types of issues, the electrical problem and the mechanical problem. So first, let's talk about the mechanical problems. And it's easy to uh, illustrate those on this older game here. So let's talk about the different components. You have the plunger, you have the coil, you have this bracket at the end of it. This is called the coil stop. It's a little L-shaped bracket, and it has a little metal plug inside there, and this thing pounds against it. You can hear it when I close it. You hear that metal? That is the plunger hitting the coil stop, and it physically keeps it from going any further. The coil stop is supposed to be uh, isolated from the bracket, with a non-conductive material, non-magnetic material, so that it doesn't magnetize because of the electromagnet. And if this coil stop does get magnetized, that's sometimes where you can get the chatter or a buzz from a uh, flipper. So if you have a flipper that buzzes or chatters, changing the coil stop is a good thing. Uh, also, sometimes coil stops can cause all kinds of other problems. They can cause weak flippers, they can fall apart, and bounce around inside and cause the flippers to basically uh, stick. But the most common cause of sticking in flippers is the plunger just getting dirty. So you'll see you have the plunger and it's attached to this, in this case it's a piece of Bakelite. On modern games it might be a piece of nylon. And then it's attached to the swing arm that the flipper is attached to. So because this thing is constantly moving and banging around, you have metal on metal contact. This metal on metal contact creates what's called what we call black dust. It's basically atomized metal. It's very fine medical particles. You can see it's on my finger from just touching this. So the most common cause of flipper bad flipper performance and flipper sticking is dirt and dust getting on this because it is uh, 
an electromagnet, it'll kind of magnetize and it'll stick to it. And this dust will get all over everything in the thing. So you want to clean this on a regular basis, but you do not want to lubricate this with any kind of oil. Any kind of liquid lubrication will just exacerbate the problem and the dust will turn into this solid gunk. That's one of the things on pinball machines, none of the mechanisms should ever be lubricated with oil. Now there are some dry lubrication you can use like graphite or spray silicon. I like to use a silicon lube and I will, when I, I will spray it on here and then I will wipe it down so that it's nice and smooth. Okay, so here's something I like to use, this dry lube with Teflon, right? And if this is the first thing to go to if your flippers are just not performing well and they're getting a little bit sticky, is you can take this and you can spray a little bit like that, and then take a paper towel and just wipe it all clean and get all of that gunk off, right? And, uh, and just work the flipper a little bit. And oftentimes that will clear up a lot of your problems. There's also a sleeve, a plastic sleeve inside of these things that will wear over time and get striations in it. You can replace the coil sleeve and that'll, that'll um, make it work better. Sometimes the plunger will get mushroomed at the tip and you can take this hole apart and you can file that plunger down and make it nice and smooth and remove any burrs off of it and that will help. Now you could also obviously replace the whole assembly and that's another way you could do it. But I like to reuse these things as long as you don't, if they don't get too damaged, you can keep using them over and over. But the most common way to fix a sticky flipper is to just clean, clean the mechanism. And taking it apart is fairly easy. You, you, easiest thing to do is to undo the coil stop. You see there's two nuts here and you unscrew that and then this, this thing comes off and then the coil slips off and then you can clean the whole assembly. This, this will also work on modern games as well. When you put these uh, screws back in, you might want to use some uh, thread lock on them because they really do are subject to a lot of vibration and they'll break loose. Also make sure they're not loose. Oftentimes when flippers are acting wonky, something is loose on the mechanism. Now these are all the mechanical problems. So that's it. You also want to check, let's take a look at the uh, Theater of Magic game. So here's a more modern mechanism, same difference. You see there's a nylon uh, thing here connected to the coil stop and it goes like that. There's our coil stop. This, in this case, it's hex, uh, a hex thing that'll undo it, but this comes off. So if you really want to rebuild the flippers, the easiest thing to do is replace the coil stop. You can get a whole new plunger too. And to remove the plunger, in this case, you take a little wrench and you loosen this up. And then once the coil stop is off, you can just pull this thing off and replace the whole assembly. Oftentimes you don't need to. All you really need to do is lubricate it. Now you'll notice there's not a spring here on this one. The spring is on the other side. So the spring can be in a different spot. And, uh, but it's still basically the same mechanism. Now let's go look at a modern game. All right, so here is a Foo Fighters. And again, it's very, almost identical. The spring is on the other side. There's the plunger and it works like that. This, you can see it's, it's already getting a little bit dirty. This could be cleaned a little bit. But that's basically the main mechanical problems is making sure everything is tight and don't use any oil on it, but you can use a dry lube and just spray and clean everything. You can take the coil, you can take the flipper apart by removing the, this uh, coil stop, taking the whole thing off and just checking to make sure everything flows smoothly. If the plunger is mushroomed, you can either file it down or just replace it. The parts are not that expensive. Okay, now let's talk about electrical problems. If there's an electrical problem with the flippers, it's going to operate a lot differently. It'll, uh, it, the f coil will stick on or the flipper will go up and then go right back down, or it will just work, but it won't be very powerful. So let's go over the different causes of various electrical problems. So first on these old games, the actual power that goes to the flipper will go through the actual flipper button. So you want to make sure these contacts are nice and clean. If, uh, if it sparks a lot when you're playing, and also your play style will have a lot to do with it. You should just press the flipper button lightly. If you, if you slap the flipper button, it doesn't make as good a contact. It creates vibrations in the other leaf switch will bounce off. So ironically, if you hit the button really fast, you're going to have weaker flippers than if you hit it nice and smoothly. But you want to clean these contacts because the voltage that powers the flipper goes through them. So if it's not a good contact, you're not going to get enough power to it. So the other thing are, whenever I have a problem with flippers, 
the first thing I do, aside from looking for obvious mechanical issues, is I check the lugs, the power lugs on the coil. So let's go over here because it's a little bit closer. So this is a theater of magic. The other day, somebody complained the right flipper wasn't working, which is right over here, but I'm going to use the left flipper for this example. So when, when we press the button, the flipper would go up and then it would go right back down. It was really weird. Well, I immediately knew what that was. That was one of the, one of the power things on the lug was off. Usually when there's a flipper problem, it's almost always somewhere here. Usually one of these connectors, if your flipper just stops working, pull the play field up and check the power lines to the coil. You want to grab these and you want to pull them. You want to examine them to make sure that, that it's a good connection. I've often seen, because it's a very violent mechanism, these things will break off. The solder joints will become cracked, or since this is stranded wire, a couple of the strands will break, and there'll be just one tiny little wire holding the thing on. Oftentimes, this thing will completely break off, and then the flipper will either not have any power, or it'll go up and back down, or it won't work at all. And often, it's just one of these lugs here has broken off and needs to be resoldered on. So let's talk about why there's three lugs and what, which ones they are. So if you look on this particular flipper, you can see a thin wire, a thicker wire, and then both the thin and the thicker wire. So you have a high power coil, which is the thicker wire with less windings. You have a low power portion of the coil, which is a thinner wire with more windings. And the reason for that is to initially fire, put the fire the flipper up, you need a lot more power. To keep the flipper up once you hold the button and you don't need as much power. So what the flipper does is it, it uses the high power portion to initially flip the flipper because that needs the, the power to actually flap that heavy steel ball around. But just to keep the flipper up, you don't need that much power. So it switches over to the low power portion of the coil. The reason for this is if the high power portion were on for too long, the coil would literally heat up and start to melt. So if you ever have a problem where a coil heats up and melts, it's probably because something went wrong with the circuit and the, only the high power coil is firing. This is also a reason why many of us complain when we see people hit the flipper buttons rapid fire really fast. That rapidly fires the high power portion of the coil, can heat up the coil and cause it to melt and damage itself. That's why that flappity flipper bird thing with the, the flipper buttons that kids do is very undesirable. It can literally break the machine by firing the high power coil so much that it heats up and melts. So, what you have here is you have a power feed that goes to the coil. You have two leads coming off of it, the high and the low, and it's in the circuit that's based around a switch. And let's find the switch on this game. The switch is right here. You see this leaf switch? So when the flipper goes all the way up, you see how that arm hits the switch. And in this case, it's normally open. And when the flipper hits the full upright position, it closes those two contacts. So what it does there is it creates a new path for the electricity to flow through through the uh, low power portion of the coil instead of the high power portion of the coil. And it, um, it basically, or maybe it breaks the other connection. I can't remember because I'm not sure how, you know, different games have different. Sometimes it's normally open, sometimes it's normally closed. But when that switch is um, closed, it activates the low power coil and it's, and that's what keeps it staying on. So if the flipper ever goes up and goes right back down, chances are the low power portion of the coil just broke loose or there's a problem with the switch. Again, on, on uh, older games with these end of stroke switches, clean the contacts. If the contacts are messed up, that can also affect flipper performance. So you want to clean these contacts and you want to just make sure that you have good connections on the coil. And that is probably 90% of all your flipper problems right there. Mechanical, keeping them clean, don't add oil, and electrical, checking to make sure that all your connections are really good. So if you guys have any more um, questions, feel free to leave them in uh, the video and I'll answer them. And until next time, thanks for watching.